another Mercury retrograde, are things going to continue to fall apart or will they for once come together? Well, that largely depends on how we prepare for the next three weeks. In this video, I'm going to give you three no-fail survival tips to navigate Mercury retrograde in May 2022. What's up, beautiful? It's Lisa Roulette, and I'm here to help you heal, navigate your ascension journey, and create a life you love. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for your patience. I have been MIA for about a month. I've been working on a little community called Lightworkers Lounge, where lightworkers, starseeds, and empaths are welcome to join us as we remember why we're really here, what our mission is, and how we can bring more light to the planet at this time. In order to join the community, all you have to do is click on the in the description of the video below. Come on in and join us. If you're new here, welcome. We are all about healing and spiritually awakening to remember who we really are on this channel. So we talk about lots of subjects from healing to manifesting to astrology, because as you know, astrology is one of our greatest awakening or ascension tools. It reminds us as above, so below, as within, so without. We are energetic beings and we cannot escape the energy of the cosmos. So we look to astrology a lot for direct on our soul's divine destiny and our path. So if you're new here and you dig what I put down, please consider subscribing, like, comment, and share because that's what tells YouTube that the channel is worthy of more viewership. So I appreciate your assistance and help. And of course, join us in Lightworkers Lounge. Let's dive into today's video. We're talking about three no-fail survival tips to navigate the next three weeks because, as we know, Mercury retrograde can make things a little chaotic. But before we dive into the tips, let's talk about what Mercury retrograde really is because it does have this very ominous wrap in the astrological community. And basically what it's saying is that Mercury is retrograde as in it's traveling backward, but Mercury does not travel backward. Mercury travels faster than the Earth around the Sun, and during this period of time, it slows down, which creates an optical illusion of Mercury traveling backward, but it does not actually travel backwards. So here we are with Mercury retrograde, and one of the reasons it does have this ominous tone around it is because when Mercury slows down enough to appear in a retrograde motion, it also slows down all of the qualities of Mercury. And the primary quality of Mercury is communication. Mercury is the great messenger. And so when it slows down, so too does all forms of communication, from the communication that we use to speak to one another, to the technological communications and the systems that support communications all throughout the world. So a lot of times during a Mercury retrograde, communication not only slows down, but it can also break down, making things sort of very difficult to understand because obviously if communication is slowing down or breaking down, things can't move forward in a rational, logical manner. Now, the beautiful thing about astrology is that it presents to us the energy that we're working with at any given time. And we can either ignore it and let the energies control us or sort of run away with us, or we can work with the energies by understanding them better. So we know that when Mercury is in retrograde, it is slowing down the qualities of Mercury, which predominantly are our communication. In addition, Mercury is retrograding through Gemini and Taurus, and Mercury is at home in Gemini. And it's important to look at Gemini because it is a mutable sign, which is an ever-changing sign, and it is also an air sign. So it's very much up in the head all the time. So this is really about rocking our thoughts, disruptive thoughts, maybe anxious thoughts, maybe confusing thoughts. So keeping in mind that when you're communicating, you're really going to want to sort of know when Gemini is having that massive impact over you and maybe try to tame the qualities of Gemini just a little bit through some like breath work or just calming down a little bit, Gemini friends, but it, you don't have to be a native Gemini to, to have this, have this energy affect you in such a way. So let's dive into the three survival tips that you can use to navigate the next three weeks. Number one, don't get lazy. 
Remember, you are co-creating with the universe at all times. You're co-creating with the universe. You're co-creating with the, the present energies. You're co-creating with your family members, your bosses, your, your colleagues. You co-create all the time. Creation cannot be stopped. And if you've taken purpose and power, you hear me say this all the time. Creation cannot be paused. It cannot be stopped. You can't be like, you know what? I just need a break because I'm tired. I don't want to create today. You are creating at all times. You're co-creating at all times. And that's so important to remember. So as you are through your existence, through your energetic vibration, co-creating at all times, don't get lazy because as this Gemini Mercury retrograde energy takes your mind sort of apart, <laughs> you want to make sure that you are participating responsibly in the co-creative process. So now is a very good time to increase whatever mindfulness practice that you use and meditation practices to really slow down and don't let your thoughts get the best of you, keeping in mind that you're not your thoughts. You're not your feelings and you're not your thoughts. You are consciousness unfolding at all times and you have the capacity to direct your thoughts in the way that you want even with Mercury retrograde. Number two, Mercury rules the throat chakra. And this is how we communicate through the throat chakra. So really important to be increasingly mindful of the language that you use to describe your ideas from the crown and the pictures and images that you form in the third eye. Very important to be mindful of what language you use to express your needs, your wants, your desires in the co-creative process. Now, Gemini is sometimes said to be ruled by the throat chakra as well, but I'm going to say intuitively for this message, because Gemini also rules the shoulders, the arms, the breast region, I'm going to say this is big heart chakra energy. So this is a very good time to let anything old relationships that no longer serve you to break apart and not in a sort of destructive way, but almost letting them fall apart by not supporting them anymore. Because we're in a time that we need to really be forming and upholding relationships that are co-creative, uplifting, and inspiring really being able to form common intentions with our co-creators so that we're both working toward an outcome. So keeping in mind, throat chakra energy, heart chakra energy, tuning in to what you're speaking, to what you're feeling inside of your relationships, letting those not so wonderful relationships really fall off, fall apart, and building relationships that are going to support you over time. The other thing to remember about the throat chakra is that while it is our center of communication, we also receive divine will from the back side of the throat chakra. And as we are continuing to navigate an ever changing world during this mass awakening and on our ascension journey, we want to be available for those messages from the divine, right? So really remembering that there is an intelligent source of energy in the middle of all things. At the center of all things that are material and manifest, there is one source unit of consciousness from which everything springs from. And that source unit of consciousness is what many of you call God. So using your mindful meditative moments to contemplate your relationship with God, and I do talk about this a lot, really contemplating your relationship with God and what your light work or what is really your life work outside of the roles that you play, what that is. So this is a good time to really allow those messages to come through. And as you allow those messages to come through, the beautiful thing is you will start to develop your intuitive and psychic abilities even more. And finally, number three, this is a time of letting go of control not letting go of our meditative mindful moments, but actually trying to control outcomes. Over the course of the next three weeks, this is not a, I'm a goal getter, right? It's not like I expect all of this to happen. We need 
room for the divine to do its work. And when we control or try to control situations, circumstances, and outcomes, we leave no room for the divine or God to do its work. So really allowing things to unfold very naturally and detaching from the outcomes because they could be rocky, just detaching and knowing that you are on an ascension path. You are awakening to remember who you really are as a creator of your life experience and also as a light worker that is illuminating the dawn that will eventually lead to the new earth. Your work here is really, really big, but you don't do it alone. You do it with God. And you have to start to identify more and more with that creative essence and allow it to do its work in your life. That's a wrap for this video, my friends. Don't forget to come and join us in Lightworkers Lounge and look for an upcoming lunar eclipse meditation that will help you navigate the next six months or so. In the meantime, don't forget to stay in the luminosity of your beautiful light and remember you are loved.